Well, today marks the first set of presidential primary contests since Donald Trump was found guilty in his criminal hush money trial. Polls are open in four states today, and Washington, D.C. has its Democratic primary after Republicans held theirs back in March. Tracking all the races for us now is CBS News campaign reporter Hunter Woodall. Good to see you, Hunter. I want to start with New Jersey. Senator Bob Menendez has filed to run as an independent, so he won't be participating in today's primary. But he's still looming over both the Democrats' uh, Senate primary and the House race in the 8th District. A reminder to everyone, he is currently standing trial on bribery charges. Um, what can you tell us about uh, his stake in this race? Well, Anne-Marie, it's very interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, Bob Menendez is New Jersey's senior senator, and this federal bribery case against him has cost him immense political influence in Washington. But at the same time, his son is actually running for re-election re to his U.S. House seat in New Jersey. Now, this is a Democratic primary, and the younger Menendez has actually been out-fundraised as of mid-May by his Democratic challenger. That's the mayor of Hoboken, Ravi Bala. That's an immense, you know, struggle for the younger Menendez as he looks to, you know, win re-election as his father obviously faces this criminal case that is gaining lots of attention and lots of scrutiny. That's really interesting. Um, we're going to tick right through them. In Montana... Nine Republicans are running in the race to replace Congressman Matt Rosendale, uh, who was one of the, he was rather one of the eight Republicans who voted to oust then Speaker Kevin McCarthy. So what larger implications does this race have for the future of the party? Well, as you talked about, I mean, Rosendale was an interesting Republican. He was a challenge for the narrow House Republican majority, you know, over the last year and a half, two years in Congress. This is a seat, you know, it's a reliably, you know, red state, and there's a variety of Republicans running. There's the state, there's a state auditor, there's a state senator, and there's even a former member of Congress himself trying to win this Republican race. A contest like this doesn't tend to get a ton of attention, but it will probably provide a telling example of what kind of Republican Party we could see in Washington come 2025, because voters tend to kind of show, hey, do I want somebody like Rosendale, who has been unafraid to go against their own party, or do they want somebody who's going to go along with the majority if Republicans do hold on and maintain control of the chamber this fall? So let's talk about sort of the Trump effect, if there will be one, when we're talking about the contest today. You know, we saw right after the guilty verdict, a lot of Republicans kind of fall in line and say, and basically sort of parrot what the former president mm -hmm. was saying about how the court case went, that he was railroaded, that he was, you know, uh, targeted and all that sort of stuff. Um, and the Republicans that didn't do that found themselves the target of much criticism from fellow Republicans. Is there a Trump effect here in some of these races? Well, it's, it's obviously very interesting. I mean, these are the, really the first substantial primary tests we'll be seeing since, you know, the New York verdict and Trump's criminal case, or one of Trump's criminal cases, I should say. Now, the big thing is, I'm looking at Montana. There's an ability for voters in Montana to vote no preference. That's, Ooh. you know, an avenue, obviously, for if there's Republican primary voters who want to send a message to former President Donald Trump as he runs for the White House, that's one avenue. I'm also looking at New Mexico. Some of Trump's 2024 rivals who have since left the race, including former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, are on the ballot. So this is another state, again, New Mexico, where uh, former you know South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley could get some substantial support to show that there obviously are some concerns amongst Trump still in the GOP, even as he obviously is the presumptive Republican nominee and, you know, goes unchallenged for the nomination at this point. Right, which is the same for Biden as well. But as you know, there have been several states where the, President Biden faced, you know, protests over uh, perhaps his policy in, uh, in uh, uh, sorry, Israel and other mm -hmm. things that people just didn't seem to like. Are you anticipating uh, similar protest votes? The main state I'm watching for uh, President Biden today is New Jersey. New Jersey is obviously a reliably Democratic state. It's not a battleground state. But it is a state where, t you know, today voters can vote, you know, uncommitted. And that's obviously been the mm. challenge that President Biden has seen as he runs for re-election. Now, again, this isn't something that you're like, he isn't likely to lose the state or anything like that. But this is another avenue where voters who are concerned about how uh, President Biden has handled things can voice their concern. And in a reliably Democratic state, they can so show, potentially so show some cracks in the job that Biden has done so far and his ability to win re-election this fall. All right, Hunter, thank you very much.